Hi, this is Jerry. We will now continue our discussion with arrays. Array is not limited to string. We may use array also on double, float, integer, and boolean. These array variables may undergo arithmetic operations before accumulating its intended value. Let us consider the given problem. We're going to design program salary that computes a number of employees by entering their names, hours, work, and rate per hour. After that, we will produce a summary report that will display the names, the hours work, the rate per hour, and its computed salary. We will display the information in reverse order of entry. So the last name entered would be displayed first. This would be our sample input-output interactions, and we will have salary report at the end. Let us establish first the algorithm of the program. The program would, should be able to handle number of employees depending on the, value, on the value entry by the user. The number will be our basis for the array size, of course. So on our example, it is 3. So we will process 3 sets of entries. To store rate per hour and hours work of each employee, we're going to assign array variable to hold the value. Salary is simply computed by rate per hour multiplied by hours work. And the last entry will be displayed first as the salary report is generated. We start by creating salary program. Since we're going to use the scanner utility and the decimal format, we're going to include that, import that. Let us start with the program. Instantiate scanner and decimal format. Declare the variable that will hold the number of employees. Initialize it with the value 0. Declare arrays, name, rate, hours work, but with no size yet identified. We prompt now the user to enter the value and assign to numf variable. Considering that the value is already assigned to numf, we can now declare the size of array's name, rate, and hours worth. We designate a counter index num that will increment in assigning the value of the element of the array variables. We initialize it with the value 0. We will use while loop statement in handling the entries. This loop will only terminate if index number is already equal with num, num m. So we will have the loop. We from first to enter the employee name. Let's make use of the array. Assign the name, whatever it will be entered. Prompt user to enter number of hours work. We assign whatever the entry to array hours work. Prompt the user to enter rate per hour. Again, we'll make use of the rate, array rate, and Assign it with the value whatever the user enters.
So this is a looping statement. So we need to increment increment index num. As we begin to print the output of the program, let us print first the headers or the title of the output. We'll make use of the backslash T, the tab, and backslash N within text to properly align the display information. We will use another looping statement here, the for statement. We declare integer variable I that will serve as the, as the counter in accessing the element of the arrays. Instead of 0 as the initial value of our counter, use the value of num, num m minus 1. Why did we deduct 1? Since the accessing the, accessing the array starts from the last element, index number is array minus 1. In order to reach 0 as the first element of the array, we guarantee on our condition i greater than or equal to 0 that it needs to reach 0. We are now going to display the details for each. Let's start with the name. We include the tab. We go for the rate, formatting the output. This is where we use our decimal format. We display our work. And now we display the salary. So salary is hours work multiplied by its rate. Still, we're going to use its decimal format so we could have proper output. We're done with the program. Let's test it. Save. Run. So on our exam sample output, we selected three. We first enter the first employee. And second employee, Karen. Her last employee, Ivy. So we're done with the entering of three employees. We generate now the salary report. And here's our output. Hi, this is Jerry. Thank you for watching this video. If you'd like to see the script, or codes of this tutorial, please click the link below. Do visit us on our Facebook and Twitter account. Don't forget to hit the like buttons.